<laughs> the next question here is from Raul. Uh, in the foreseeable future, will LTT Store ever become a hub for selling other YouTubers' merch? After the Jerry Rig Everything Knife, I was started to wonder. Um, I don't see why not. Any other creators, y'all out there, you wanna you wanna like wholesale some stuff to us? If we think it's a good product, like I don't see why we wouldn't carry it. I don't know, man. It's like, should we just have like creatorwarehouse.com and like... I've been I... wanting Creator Warehouse to support other creators for a long time. The way that I want them to do it is not in that way. And I understand it's super hard. I get it. Oh, like develop products for them? Yeah. I know. I know. You know we are working with someone big though, right? No. Yeah. Really big. I didn't. But it's going to take time. Yeah, and it's hard, and it takes yeah. upfront investment because the way that we do it is yes. a little different. Even from that person, it yeah. is it is requiring a significant time commitment. But this person has a lot of integrity and cares about the quality of the products that yeah. they want to. They don't just want to sell stuff the, to their the, audience. The thing that I've liked about the store the most the whole time we've had it, but more lately, because like originally we were just doing like what we could and now we can do more, which is great. But the thing that I've liked about the store is that I, I feel stoked to stand behind our products, which is cool. I think we make good stuff. A lot of YouTuber merch, even well-intentioned YouTuber merch yeah. is kind of junky because you, you do what you're supposed to do, right? You look online look at what other people are doing. This is what's available to me. This is all I can really do without building a business arm, which is not realistic for most creators, yeah. which is fine and makes sense. And those results are often kind of junky. Yeah. I know. So being able to have actually good stuff is cool, but it's hard. Um, and having the Creator Warehouse team be able to be that arm for these other companies, I think would be really sick. But again, that itself is really difficult and we're already dealing with our own scale things and there's lots of work to do so yeah and it's tough right because like it works for us because we are taking 100 percent of the margin if we had another creator come in and say yeah i uh i want to do uh a, 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 a purse okay so whatever right it's like some product so let's say that uh they they wanted to target um like a pretty typical retail product markup is about double, okay? So let's say they wanted to target uh, a one ninety nine price point, okay? So if it was for us, we have a hundred dollars to work with to 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 build that product um, while because you got to understand there are certain costs associated with a product that just scale with price. so, you know any any losses from warranty for example it's not like um it's not like just because it's a more expensive product you can just you can just make a maximum of twenty dollars on every product no matter how much it actually costs um there's also higher transaction fees on the transaction like there's just there's just fixed costs that that go up with the value of the product and so it's it's pretty typical to aim for about a hundred points on on a product and so if we were operating as just this single vertically integrated entity like we are now, then we could kind of go, okay, well then uh, we have a hundred dollars to work with to develop this product and we will make a hundred dollars on it. This is all purely hypothetical. And I've used these simple uh, one to two ratios before for cost to, to retail price. It's not always that simple. We have products we make more than that. We have products we make less than that. And, um, that also helps us absorb the storage and handling and transaction fees and like all that stuff. But we're keeping the math really, really simple. So all of a sudden, we are not acting as a vertically integrated company where the creator and the creating company are, are, are one, essentially. Now we're creator warehouse and we're working with another person. Okay, so of that $100, what's that split? Um, if, if it's 90, 10, if they take 90 of it and we take 10, that sounds pretty good for them because they don't have to like build a business arm, like you said, to create these products. But is that even worth our time? If we're selling these $200 products and we're taking home $10 of that $100 of margin, why did we even bother? Unless we, unless we are going to sell like 100,000 of them or something, um, the 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 multiple people that are probably because any product you're going to sell that many of 
I guarantee you the development costs were substantial, well into six figures. But I think I think so why are we bothering? So a lot of what I would I guess bring yeah. up is that the thing that I like the most about our stuff is the quality of it. But that's and exactly maybe, it. And maybe hold I on. was getting there. Hold on. I was going to get there. Hold on. I was going to get there. Hold on. Maybe we don't do purses. Well, okay. But, but we have our own blanks for shirts. And we have consistent, really high quality. And the sure. printing's good. And we yes. have bottles. And we have other stuff. Okay. But hold on. Let's go back to, let's go back to the, the margin question then. Okay. So, so we have to figure out that it has to be enough margin for us to get out of bed. Because yeah. otherwise we could have made our own purse. Yeah. Right? Okay. So then we need more than 10% probably. So then from their side, okay, well, it has to be enough for me to bother getting out of bed because at the end of the day, I'm the one who has to be involved in the design process for this. I have to sell it. It has my name on it and ultimately reflects on me if it's bad. So they're taking a lot of, they're taking a lot of inherent risk in, in undertaking this. So we might go, okay, fine. Um, uh, $100 isn't enough for us to split. So now the final price needs to be 250 bucks. So we each get 75 and now we're happy. Hypothetically, right? So we're both making less. The price went up to you by involving these multiple entities. Now, it doesn't... I know people are going to be like, um, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's not how it works. But the point is that the more entities involved in this process, the more ways that whatever margin there is is split and the more it drives up the finished cost. And so, you know, from my point of view, and you guys might think, oh, you're being greedy. 10% should be lots, right? Well, okay, well, who's doing customer support? A am I handling that? No. Why not? Not, not in the way Because they don't, they don't want to build a business stuff. arm, right? If they don't want to build a business arm, well, then why are they doing support? Well, we should be a one-stop shop. Okay, well, then I need more margin. Because so we run their Shopify pages? Yeah, oh, okay. So what, do I have the login? Okay, at that point, who owns the shop? Do I or do you? Am I licensing your brand well, now not, at that point? That's not how that works. There's a few things in here that I don't think we're lining up on. One, the Shopify sure. page thing, running their Shopify page. Oh, I know require, you can have daughter sites. Would require a login, yeah. but would not require ownership of the site. No, but it could. But why? It just could. Okay. Because at that point, you well, don't need that for customer support. You don't need that for development. Mean, you don't need that for marketing. I just mean you don't it's need complicated. That for yeah, but I think it's less complicated than you're. Well, it can showing. be. Yeah, so make it less. Well, you don't okay, have so to make fine. It what do you want? What do you want me to do? I I think new product development would only be for very very specific creators and at very very high volume, which is something we're doing. Yeah. C existing product though, sure. shirt bottles. I think that's a lot easier than you're letting on. It is. Design is almost certainly going to be done by them, or we could have like a more premium track where you work with our designers. It's still more complicated than that, though, because when we print the design, right? So we get it printed. We have a shirt. Now what? Are they local? Can we show it to them and make sure that the colors meet their needs? Is it what they envisioned when they designed it on their screen? Is their screen even color accurate? I don't know. To ship it to them. Okay. But then now you're they adding extra time. Approval. They'll have a hard time doing anything timely at that point because we have to get their design, get it printed, get it back, ship it to them get their confirmation, this kind of multi-step process, and you know... I don't think it adds a step. You know from communicating with... It shouldn't go printer to us. It should go printer to them. You know from... Communi well, it doesn't because we pick them up locally. We have it printed locally. Oh, okay. And you know from communicating with creators they that like they are not flaky answer. as fuck. They really, 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 really love to not they answer. They are the worst. Yeah, they actually are. Myself included. And me. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I know I'm overcomplicating it, but you're oversimplifying it. I think it's probably a, uh, true on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fair. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs>